Sister Aid, happy Thursday. We're on to Lesson 22, Christ's Ascension and Rule. Remember on Tuesday, we took out Lesson 21, Christ's Resurrection. I'm just going to start with a review of just Lesson 21. Uh, his resurrection means three things to us. Number one, it proves he's the Son of God. Number two, that God the Father accepted his work. Uh, if you remember the truth, it says he completed his work of redemption for us. So he was holy. He did everything he had to do. And then number three, he's going to raise us back to life someday. Now we're going to talk about what Christ did for the next 40 days before he ascended into heaven and what's he doing today. So what does Jesus, uh, sorry, what does Jesus ascension and rule give us comfort? Let's get rolling on it. What is Jesus doing for us? We start in Luke chapter 24, verses 50 and 51, where it says this. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, that's about four to five miles outside Jerusalem, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. So the story of um, the ascension is he goes out of the Mount of Olives, guys, and floats up into heaven. That's the book of Luke. That's how Luke ends. And then Luke writes the book of Acts. And this is what he says where he picks up the book of Acts. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid them from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as they were going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside the men of Galilee. They said, Why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. So guys, there's a few things that we're going to learn about Judgment Day today as we go through this. Number one, Jesus is going to come back on Judgment Day just the same way. So he floated up, he's going to come back. Now guys, please understand as we go through this that a cloud hid him. Where he goes after the cloud hid him, he goes to heaven. A lot of us always picture Jesus, you know, heaven being these clouds that we're floating on. We don't know anything, guys. Okay, it's not like in a plane, I'm going to fly through clouds and all of a sudden I'm going to run through heaven, okay? Just like we always talk about Jesus descending into hell and we always think hell is in the middle of this earth. That's probably also a little misleading too, guys, because we know on Judgment Day God's going to destroy this earth. But he's not destroying hell. Hell lasts for an eternity. So um, we know it's up in the someplace, but we don't necessarily have to say it's in the sky because it was simply a cloud that hit him. The angels show up and they say, dude, stop staring, get to work. We'll see the work that he has to do. John 17, 24, the prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. He says, Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory. The glory you have given me because you love me before the creation of the world. Okay. So he wants us to be in heaven someday. He says, if I'm going to come to this earth and live a perfect life and die on the cross and everything else, I want everybody to be with me in heaven. And he gives this line in John 14. He says, My father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. Okay, I remember when I was young, guys, I'd read this passage and I'm like, okay, Jesus up in heaven. It's a good thing Joseph was a carpenter because it sounds like he's up in heaven building me a room because he's going there to prepare a place for him. Guys, you got to understand the context. In John chapter 14, Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. In other words, he knows he's going to die. He says, I have to go and get ready to die so I can bring you to heaven. Guys, heaven's not under construction, okay? We're good. God created everything perfectly. And when judgment day comes, he's going to come back and take us to be there. So what is Jesus doing for us? Jesus' ascension makes us sure that he has prepared a place for us in heaven. What we're getting at, guys, is if he still had work to do on this earth, he wouldn't have floated up, would he have? He'd have stayed on earth to continue his work. So after his death and resurrection, he spent 40 days on this planet. And after the 40 days, he went up to heaven because his work was done. It's over. He has prepared a place for us. Beautiful comfort. Question two says, what is the comfort for us? We go to Ephesians 1 verse 20, where he says this, he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms. Guys, when we talk about being seated at the right hand, that's that position of power. So Jesus went back to heaven and was given his ultimate power again to rule over heaven and earth. He tells that to the disciples in Matthew 28, 18, where he says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me, and I'm going to start to use all that authority again. Well, we're here. I'm going to grab verse 20. 
And he says, verse 19, guys, that we skipped, you know that. Therefore, go make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Verse 20, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And where's the comfort? And surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. So disciples, for your whole life I'll be with you. And 2,000 years later, believers, I will be with you to the very end. I will guard you, I will protect you, and I will make sure that my word is being preached to the people that need to hear it so that they can have a chance of heaven. Philippians 3, 12 to 14, I love this passage. This is Paul saying, Not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal of heaven, but I press on to take hold of that from which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Jesus called me to faith. My job is to hang on to that faith. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. I'm not confident I'm in heaven yet because I'm not dead. But one thing I do, I forget everything that is behind me, whether it's good or bad, it's done, it's in the past. And I strain toward what is ahead, excited for heaven. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which Christ has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Guys, it's just, I love the word and here's what I love. I love that he used the word press. It's hard. We know it. I am straining toward what is ahead, right? I press on to take hold of it. Paul says it's going to be a challenge, guys, but it's going to be so worth it because heaven is going to be so awesome. And then, guys, back to John 14, 19. If you remember this one from Tuesday, the wonderful comfort of because I live, you also will live. So what's the comfort for us? Jesus' ascension makes us sure that he is with us and will keep us safe until we make it to heaven with him. That's his rule. That's his from lesson 17, his kingdom of glory, his rule over heaven. It's also his kingdom of grace, his rule over believers until we get there, guys. And so I can take incredible comfort from his ascension. A lot of the disciples were like, no, Jesus, don't leave us. But what Jesus is really saying is, guys, it's okay. It's all done. All work is over. Your only job is to be like the Apostle Paul. Hang on to that faith. So we were trying to answer the question, what does it mean for us? And the answer is, guys, we know that Jesus earned heaven for us and that he will keep us safe until everlasting life. My job, don't say no. I don't need to say, I don't need Jesus. I can do it myself. I, I can't. Okay, so that's your only job. Don't say no to Jesus with that. All right, let's practice our uh, article. I made a step harder. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell the third day. He rose again. From the dead, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. What does this mean? I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord. He has redeemed me, a lost and condemned creature, purchased and won me from all sins, from death and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death. All this he did that I should be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he has risen from death and lives and rules eternally. This is most certainly true. So six, I hope you keep saying that with me and you're getting it memorized so that you can do that on your test uh, coming up next week. Let's close it with prayer. Lord, we come to you today and we get the wonderful comfort of your ascension that your work on this earth is done. The work that you have left is preaching the gospel and you have given that to us. Help us to live and to speak in such a way that we bring many to faith and keep them in that faith, Lord, until they join you in heaven. We ask all this in your name. Amen. All right, six, happy Thursday. You got a worksheet on Christ's ascension and rule. Uh, you made it to the end of this video. And so you can just write extra credit plus two. Made it to the end of the video. Have a great day.